Yeah. One of the things that I feel like I really convicted me was him talking about giving to your kids because you just have all these different things of like, hey, like our ceiling is your floor. Like if we're accumulating like all this wealth here on earth and all these real estate stuff, it's like, okay, obviously you have it in a trust. You're like, yeah, you give it to your kids. Like who, who else are you going to give it to? But now it has me like really thinking because they put all of their stuff in a trust and they give 50% of it away. And each kid, if they want to work at Hobby Lobby or whatever company they have, they have to, that's how they make their money through the company is by working. They don't just get handed money. Yeah. They do They do get some certain gifts at certain ages. 25, 35, 45. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of trust fund kids get like so much money at like 18 and different ages that are just, it's so much that they don't know how to do with it. And then it actually ruins them. This is why a lot of families don't continue continue with their generational legacy because the parents built this whole wealth and then the kids just like destroy it all because it went to them. So I thought that was really cool. And then also with that trust, having giving parameters. So we wrote down like, you know, once we're gone, like, and they have to vote on where this money's going in the trust every single year, what are they going to be doing? So it's like, what are you not going to give to? What are you going to give to? And every time you give a kid something, you also take something away from them. And so I thought that was really interesting. And just, you know, how we're raising Kingston, like the other day I bought him a bunch of these um, magnet tiles and he absolutely loves them. And he was like, we need more, we need more, like to build, you know, more houses. And I said, well, what we can do is we can sell some of your old toys that you don't play with anymore and we can make money that way. So it's just like, listen, my money is not my money. It's, it's all God's money and we want to be good stewards of it. And so, yeah, if you want those tiles, like let's sell other things and then you can buy them. But I'm not just going to buy you every single toy that you want in this world. And for someone whose love language is giving gifts, um, Kingston has a lot of toys from us, from grandma and grandpa. And so it's like, how can we be better stewards and, and not feel like we have to have give our kids everything they want in this world, but teach them how to find the money and be resourceful. Yeah, I think that probably convicted everyone. Yeah. That was pretty intense. It was like, we, I mean, the kids literally had to sign over billions, a billion dollar inheritance mm -hmm. and be like, no, this is God's. I'm going to sign over all my rights to this. I'm going to work in this company if I want to make money from this family or I'm going to go do my own thing mm -hmm. with these few gifts. If I have a ministry, I need to present it just like any other ministry to get given to. And there were strict parameters around it, and that was definitely convicting. And like you said, when you give a kid something, you take something away from them. Yes. So, and it was cool that the kids received it. And I think that was like showed the fruit of the family aspect because there has to be bond, connection, like trust, or else if you did that, they'd be super upset. But you saw like three generations in a room mm -hmm. that at least appeared to be very, very cool. Yeah. And I think, you know, like when you see Donald Trump's kids, I always remembered the story that um, when the kids were young, they had to sit in economy and Donald Trump and his wife sat in first class and the kids were like, how come we don't get to sit up in first class with you guys? And it's like, because you you have to pay for it. <clears throat> like this is something that you have to to earn and work towards. We're not just gonna like give you every privilege. Like we worked hard for this, and so I th I thought that was really interesting because when you come from a wealthy family, usually those kids are extremely spoiled and everything's given to them, and they never experienced anything hard in their life. And so um, I think Brandon Pullen asked this question, uh, maybe not at this event, but at other events of like how how, like, what's the balance of, you know, our kids are growing up in a very blessed, nice home, nice area, everything's amazing. How do we create those hard things in their life when they don't have anything hard? Like, how do we create those little hard things to, to build resilience, to build those skill sets to, that we need in this world? 